I'm Diana Scott. I'm a member of the Liberty Reservoir History Group, and we meet here at the South Carroll Senior and Community Center each month. Today is October 21st, 2019, and we have a special treat for you all. Now, it's not Halloween candy, but it's just as good. It's a presentation given by Thornton Hush, who has agreed to share some of the memories of his long and active life with us. I wanted to show you something. This is a book called The Forgotten Corner, A History of the Oakland Mill. And I happened to write it, and I happened to interview Elizabeth Hush Meadows for a, there's quite a bit that she gave to me in here, including her photographs, et cetera. Um, plus the fact that you couldn't have a book about Oakland without having the Hush family up front and center. You'll find a lot of stories and photos that she did give to me. So today, we are looking forward to hearing more about family genealogy and your particular interests and how it felt maybe if you knew or heard um, to have the family homestead condemned by Baltimore City for the building of Liberty Dam. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome our guest speaker, Thornton Hush. Hi, thank you. I uh, thank to my sister, Elizabeth Meadows, for helping, helping us in the history of the Hush family. She, she got most of this message, the way I understand that she wrote that from my aunt, Bessie Hush Hatfield, from the, her family Bible. And, uh, and then Sis <coughs> did this and copied all this together. And she has the, uh, all my aunts and uncles, then our family, my, my family and all. They listed. So I will start by talking about the Hush family. I ha have it written down because I, I couldn't remember all of it. <laughs> so anyway, the Hush family, and of course, thanks, thanks to Sis, because if it wasn't for her, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have had this. <laughs> anyway, uh, my grandfather was William J. Hush, and he was born September the 17th in 1847 in, in Virginia, somewhere. His death was March the 26th, 1917, at the age of 69. His wife was maiden name was Rosa Bell Ebert. And she was born April 14th, 1856. Her death was August the 17th, 1915, and she died at 59 years old. They were married on September the 9th, 1875 in Baltimore City. <clears throat> and they, they lived in Baltimore City at that time, but where, I don't know. No, I don't. Anyway, they moved to Baltimore County in January the 25th, 1892. Well, where at, I don't know, but it, I imagine it was out Liberty Road, close, somewhere. And then they bought the old home place, what we call the old home place on Oakland Mills Road. Now, that is the land now where Oakland Manor is, but the house is out close to the road. It's a two-story house. And uh, that was there when they moved there from Baltimore County. And they had, uh, yeah, they bought that place December the 18th, 1897. And they had eight children, four boys and four girls. <clears throat> I'll name them George William Hush, Ida Bell Hush, Bessie Lottie Hush, Teresa Dora Hush, Arthur Howard Hush, which is my father and all, Samuel Conrad Hush, Annie May Hush, 
And Walter Edward Hush, he, he was the youngest one. And uh, then I'll, I'll start down each, uh, each of the boards, which was George William Hush. He was born on September 28, 1876. He married Lottie J. Digman in December 1899. <clears throat> he moved to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I imagine he, uh, maybe that's where she was from. I don't know. But, uh, and they had five children, Bill, Walt, and Mary, Edward, and Dorothy. Anyway, we, would, we knew them, but we weren't as close as all the rest of the family. We stayed around here in Oakland Mills Road in Sykesville. Uh, Walt, he was in the Army. I didn't know him. I, I think I met him one time. I'm not sure. But, but he, he was in the Army. And Ann, she, she stayed in Philadelphia. She, never, she was never married. Then Mary, she was married, married a pathetic. Her husband was in the uh, Philadelphia Police Department. And they... Yeah, they had, I think they had three, two children, Joseph and James. Now Dorothy, <clears throat> that was the youngest girl. She used to come down to visit us on the farm. <clears throat> she started in 1935, and she was close to this and my other sister Virginia. And <clears throat> she always come down. She came down for five years. In 39, 1936, 37, 38, and 39. And she would stay a week or two at, us, at our farm and then uh, and go back to Philadelphia. Uncle William, <coughs> I always called him William, but they, just like my name, is mixed up. <laughs> I never knew him but George, but his first name was George, but they called him William all the time. <laughs> And anyway, Uncle William's death was November the 18th, 1945. And he was uh, 69 years old. Next in, uh, next one was the Ida Bell Hush. And she married, well, she was born January the 20th, 1879, in Baltimore City. <clears throat> she married Charles Humphreys, June the 28th, 1898, and they lived in Floorville. It's on, uh, right on Freedom Avenue in Floorville, what's Freedom Avenue now? And they had four children, Vernon, Russell, Carl, and Dorothy. I didn't know the boys too well, but I, I knew of them. And uh, the only one, uh, Carl, he had one boy, Carl Jr. And Dorothy <coughs> Humphreys, she married, some of us might know, Bill Vernay. He used to live here. And uh, they moved to uh, Arizona because of his health. And they had one child, Patricia. And Ida died <coughs> October the 1st, 1958, at age 79 in two months. Next was Bessie L. Hush. She was born June the 6th, 1882, in, in Baltimore City. She married George W. Jones. I didn't never know him. They, they lived in the Sykesville area. She had two children, Guy Jones. He worked at Springfield. <laughs> you, you, you won't believe how many hushes worked at Springfield <laughs> Hospital. <coughs> and uh, Ruth Jones. She married William Evans, and they lived in Gaither. They had five children, Willard, 
Lorraine, William, Merle, and Leroy. And Bessie, uh, I don't know what, uh, George Jones must have died, I don't know. I, I, then she married Will, Willard Hatfield of Gaither, Maryland. Then they moved to Oakland Mills Road, mm -hmm. not far from the Hush Old Farmhouse, only on the opposite side of the road. <clears throat> she died in February 11, 1961, at age 78 and eight months. Next was Teresa Dora Hush. She was born November the 10th, 1884 in Baltimore City, and she died September the 5th, 1885. She only lived 10 months. <laughs> now, uh, my father was next in born, but we'll keep him, I'll keep him to the last because so I can talk about all his children. No. The next one was Samuel Conrad Hush. He was born June 9, 1891 in Baltimore County. Married Violet Elizabeth Murray. March 26, 1921. They had four children. Helen, she only lived 10 days. Mm -hmm. Then Teresa, she married Carl Milky. George Hush, he was very close to me. Uh, he, he was born the same month I was, same year. And Mary, Mary Frank, I'm now Mary Frank, she was Mary Milken. And they had, they, they had seven grandchildren and lived on Open Mills Road. He was a farmer <clears throat> and worked here and there. But his house was right next to our farm. I don't know what, uh, how, how come he lived next to us, but I imagine it was part of the old home place. But uh, that had to be a right good size lot too. Because. Anyway, Uncle Sam died June the 28th, 1943. He was only 52 years old. Next is Anna Mae Hush. She married a hate first. Now you get into the hate family too. <laughs> she was born September the 18th, 1892 in Baltimore County. She married William N. Hayes. October the 19th, 1910. She had two children, the Hayes, Luther Hayes, and Robert Hayes, which are both of my cousins. You know, they had five. The Hayes boys had five grandchildren living in the Southfield area. Of course, Luther, you know, had the. Hate funeral home. Of course, at first it was the Weir and Hate funeral home. Then Weir died, and Luther had the Hate funeral home. And at one time, I know Aunt Annie worked at Springfield Hospital. Now, how long I don't know. And afterwards, she married Walter J. Woolworth. He was a stonemason. Lived around here all the time. I mean, and he died May the 10th, 1980, at the age of 87. I don't know when Annie and Annie died. But the, the, these, these papers didn't, didn't show the death on everybody. <clears throat> of course, I got a lot of these uh, deaths on the uh, Oakland Cemetery. I went out there and tried to find the stones <laughs> to find out when they died. <laughs> Next was Walter Edward Hush. He was born September the 18th, 1893, Baltimore County. Now he lived on the old home place, right on Oakland Road, which is right 
right across from the Lakeview Cemetery on Open Road, yeah. It's the old two-story house right on Open Road there. <clears throat> I tried to find the number of it, but I, I couldn't, <laughs> didn't get it. They lived on Oakland Mills Road, the old home place. His parents bought most of his life. Now he had seven children, Marvin, Esther, Martin, Hazel, Ethel, Jean, and Norman. We was always very close, the children and all of us, the whole family, because they, they were all close to us, very close. Walter was a carpenter and a builder. He built a lot of houses on Oakland Mills Road in the Sykesville area. They had 20 grandchildren. He died September the 15th, 1964, age 71. <clears throat> now we're getting back to my parents. Which is Arthur Howard Heiss. He was born January the 3rd, 1888. And they lived on the farm, which is now the boat dock, most of their life. I think at one time, right after they got married, they, they lived on the Kelly property down on Oakland Road for a while, but I don't know just how long. They bought part of the P.R. Hate property, 39 acres, which is right next to our old farm. They bought that around 1939 or 40. And later they bought the T.R. Clark farm property, which is now where the, where the old house, where the rain spout is falling down when you come into Oakland Road, I don't know if you knew it or not, that is the old Clark property. Mm -hmm. Plus, this ground here was the old Clark property. And of course, that is sold off a lot of the lots, front lots and all at the time. <coughs> but one thing I do, want to talk about it. Our parents gave all the kids a lot that we wanted on the, some of the property that they had. And it was a half acre lot. Bill, my, my brother, he, he, he wanted on Oakland Road. And of course, I wanted on Oakland Road. My other brother Don wanted it on Arthur Avenue, and Herb wanted it on Arthur Avenue. My sister and Jenny, they had the other plans to build other places, and in, instead of them taking a lot, my parents, the uh, way I understand, paid for their kitchen cabinets in their houses. And uh, at the time, lots was approximately worth five hundred dollars. And then uh, so you can imagine what <laughs> they have uh, done for us. Now, I had something here and I lost it in the paper somewhere. <laughs> Alfred and Mary Hush lived on the farm most of their lives. And when they bought the Heath property and the Clark property, in '44, the, the old farm was sold to the Baltimore City Department, which is now the living today, which later the city made into a boat dock. <coughs> in '50, they built the house right as you come in around the first bend on Oakland Road in 1950 and my mother lived there four years in this new stone house and she died like four years later at the university hospital with a brain tumor 
But she graduated from Springfield Hospital too. She went to work there in 1930. <clears throat> now, Arthur Hush was appointed judge of the Orphan's Court in June 1956, and he served two and a half years. After my mother died on May the 30th, 1959, he married Louise Morgan from Washington, D.C., and he died of a heart attack in September the 3rd, 1960. So then I got Alpha Hired Hudson, born June the 3rd, 1888, died May the 3rd, 1988, married Virginia Humphreys, February the 9th, 1911. He lived on the farm, which is the boat dock now, at Wicked, roughly 165 acres and all. He had six children, Herbert Howard Hush, we can call Herb, Elizabeth Rosabel Hush, which we call Sis, Arthur William Hush, we call Bill, Anna Virginia Hush, we always call Jenny, Emery Donald Hush. Don't forget to sign up for our 10 year anniversary party, our Veterans Day program, and also our balance screening. And if you'd like to make a spirit stick, you can sign up for all these at the front desk. Ah, uh, Don, yeah, Emery Don Hush, we call Don. Then comes Melvin Thornton Hush. <laughs> they called me Thornton all the time when I was a kid and you know, raised up. All that, everybody knew me as Thornton. But then when I went to service, you had to use your first name. So I used Melvin. So some people know me as Melvin, some people know me as Thornton. But that was the way things was. <laughs> anyway, Herb was born November the 2nd, 1911. He lost his hearing at age 12. He had spidomagitis, and then I think at about the same time he got kicked in the head with a mule, and then that's when he lost his hearing. He was 12 years old. Uh, but he went to school with the Frederick Maryland School for Deaf and learned how to talk by your hands. And of course, when he'd come out of school and, and uh, come home to work, and all we, all the children learned how to uh, talk with your hands or, or spell words with your hands. You'd go A, B, C, D. And, uh, but all, they, all of us learned how to spell that way to, to talk to her and all. <clears throat> but he worked on the farm a lot now. Then uh, he went to work in the Bendix Corporation. And while there, he met Grace May Pat, June the 30th, 1950. And they adopted a boy, Teddy Hush, and they lived on Arthur Avenue. They built the house and lived on Arthur Avenue. He died December the 20th, 1963, at age 52. <laughs> Next is Sis, Elizabeth May, Elizabeth Hush Meadows. We always called her Sis. Most of it. She was born December the 20th, 1913. At, I guess it was on the death of the uh, birth certificate of Hate, then, Oakland Road. She went to school with the one room schoolhouse west of the Oakland United Methodist Church now on Minra Hill Road, and also went to the Sykesville School. We have pictures of that when she went to Sykesville in the seventh grade. She cared for Don and Thornton in 1930. Because mom, she went to work at Springfield in 1930. 
and I was about five years old, and Don was about nine, and this more or less raised me when I was small, <laughs> and she cared, cared for me, you know. Well, from about 1930 till Mom quit work, I think, in about 1939. Since married Claus Wesley Meadows, March the 19th, 1940. They lived on Oakland Road. First, we're uh, on the old Oakland Road. Yeah, that, that's where uh, Robbie was born there and then they, they bought property on back on Miller Avenue and we built a house there and after they died Robbie lives there today and Robbie had two children <clears throat> Laurie and Michael sis died January the 29th 1914 at age 100, and I think 20 some days, something like that, <laughs> 20, 29 days, something like that. Yep. <clears throat> Next is Arthur William Hush. They always called him Bill. He was born March the 4th, 1917, at North Branch, Carroll County. That, that had to be on the birth certificate because mine, my birth certificate told me where I was born, North Branch. <laughs> anyway, he went to uh, school at Sykesville High School. He graduated. At first, he worked for Robert Haight at the gas station in Randallstown. Then he married Josephine C. Noyes, April the 4th, 1939, and he lived in Sykesville. They uh, rented an apartment in Sykesville. Then he went in the U.S. Army in 1942 and, and discharged in 1945. After service, he worked as a carpenter in Baltimore County, and he built his house on Oakland Mills Road. And he died September the 30th, 1986, at 69 years old. Next is Virginia Hush Riceberg, Jenny. We always call her Jenny. She was born June the 9th, 1920, on Oakland Mills Road. She went to school at Sykesville High, and she first worked at Springfield Hospital. There we go again. <laughs> she was an LPN graduated in 1941. She married John H. Riceberg, December the 6th, 1941. They had two children, Wayne and Joanna. <clears throat> they built a house on Riceberg Lane, and have five grandchildren. She died December the 26th, 1975, had a heart attack at age 55. She died when she, she uh, after she had her children all night, she went to work at the Henderson Hospital and coming home one night during the storm, she uh, coming back from Henderson going on Ward Chapel Road there where the Statsco River is, it was flooded and she had to back and turn around and that's when she had a heart attack right there at that uh, bridge down there. <clears throat> she died at age 55. Next in line is Emory Donald Hush. And we always called him Don. He was born August 20th, 1921 at Oakland Mills Road. Went to school, Sykesville High, graduated. He first worked at Glen O. Martin Aircraft Factory. 
to marry Elizabeth May Green, March the 6th, 1942. He went in the Army in 1942 to 45. They had three children, Judy, Jerry, and Janet, six grandchildren. They lived on the house of Alpha Avenue, and he worked as a TV repairman first, and then an electrician. He worked at Henderson Hospital. Then when they closed Henderson Hospital, he transferred to Springfield. He died July the 31st, 1972, at age 51. Next is Melvin Thornton Ice, which is me. <laughs> Born August the 7th, 1926, Oakland Mills Road. School, Sykesville, I finished the ninth grade. I thought I was smart, I guess, and I, <laughs> I, I, I didn't graduate. I went to work at Russell Thorn Steel in Baltimore City. There's a lot of our neighbors and all, Carl Melky and Robeson, uh, Ralph Robeson and all, worked at uh, Russell Thorn Steel. And uh, at that time, I was 16 years old, and I guess I wanted a car and just quit school and went to work. <laughs> then I was drafted into the U.S. Navy October 1944. Discharged May 1946. Was a carpenter's helper till June 1948. Bounced around from one job to the other, and then I wanted a steady job, so I went to Springfield. June the 1st, 1948. <clears throat> I went as the in the maintenance department. I, I went to get a job as a carpenter, but they wasn't. They had it all carpenter still, so they said, we're well, hard as a maintenance handyman. And I said, okay, so I took that. I married Rose Marie Pickett, October 7, 1948. And we lived at the employee's home at Springfield for six years. And we moved into our home built on Oakland Mills Road. June 1954. And one child, Glory Jean, right there now with the red sweater. <laughs> she was born August 10, 1959. <clears throat> I retired from Springfield June 1, 1977. Then I went, I stayed home about three months and that, that was about it. Then I went to work for Georgia Super Thrift in September 77. <laughs> Worked four days a week, more or less maintenance and all for the Georgia Super Thrift. Worked 11 years. Retired for good in 1988 and 62 years old. Got Social Security. Had two grandsons, Jeffrey and Gordon. Rose died August the 7th, 2018. Well, the Hush family was very, very close, all of us, aunts, uncles, cousins, and all of us. We was, I, I never, I'm just so proud that it, it, it was such a close family. And they all helped one another out, no matter what, especially building the house, we all helped one another. And, that's the reason I guess we all <laughs> are so close because we, we work so hard to help one another. And I'm very honored and blessed to be in the Hush family. All my aunts, uncles, <coughs> and relatives. I, I was going to ask cousins and all, but I said, well, all, all the relatives because I don't want to miss nobody. <laughs> and it, it has been wonderful. So I thank God for everything he has done for us. 
Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I'll try to answer. Do you have a favorite memory of your sister, sis? <laughs> favorite? Memory. A memory, something that she did for you or that you did together? Oh, or uh, She did so okay. much. And, uh, <laughs> very, yeah. I mean, she did a lot for me. All of we we were very, well. Our family was very close. I I think the whole family was very close. I do not remember of any of us having an argument. Never. I don't. We never got mad at one another. I mean, we, we probably got mad, but we just went on. We, we we always had too much work to do. My father, he we do this, we do that. We all did work. The, the, the girls, they drove trucks just like to the boys. I mean, Jenny and Sis both trucks and all. Huh. And it was just, I can't remember. It sounds like you didn't remember a lot right then. <laughs> yeah, a lot. I mean, she did a lot for me. Very good So, so yeah. were, were you the one who started uh, the nickname Sis, or how did that come about? I don't know. No? It wasn't you, huh? No. <laughs> Always sick. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. They were, uh, well, her her uh, middle name is Rosabelle, I think. Uh, yeah, Elizabeth Rosabelle Hush. Uh, well, that was that grandmother's name. Mm -hmm. yeah. no. So it sounded like you did a lot of working. What did you do for fun? Yeah, right, yeah. Let yeah. me hear fun. What fun thing did you do? <laughs> well, we always, all, uh, when we wasn't working, <laughs> we, uh, we had time off. We played softball down at the old uh, huh. farm. We had a little place there and we played softball. And, uh, and then uh, during the summer, we would go to the swimming holes around here. Uh, we all loved to swim. And uh, we, 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 we uh, had swimming holes in uh, Morgan Run, Patapsico, and Snowden's Run. And uh, when we wasn't working in the summertime, no, we, we would all go swimming. <laughs> yeah, so. so that's about it. So, but it was. Very close family. Our uncles and aunts, they were all close. We were all close to one another, very much. Yeah. And did I hear somebody out there say they had a question? A little bit about your uh, naval experience. Where were you stationed? Uh, well, I went to Bainbridge for training, and then I uh, went to, uh, they shipped me to Norfolk, Virginia. And uh, at the time that they uh, having trouble with the uh, subs in the Atlantic Ocean, and they uh, was building uh, destroyer escorts, which is a small destroyer. And uh, I got on the destroyer escort there in North Virginia, DE number 243, J. Richard Ward. And uh, they had five other destroyer escorts and a small aircraft carrier and we go out in the Atlantic and try to find the subs and all and uh, we more or less patrolled and if a any of them would see a sub or they had the sounder system where they could hear a sub running underwater and somebody was always on the down a machine 24 hours a day. And if they did, then they would try to locate the sub and try to sink it, but then the aircraft carrier would more or less go go away from the DEs and uh, they would try to pick up the sub again, but the, if they wouldn't. But, the, but then they, they used the aircraft carrier like during the day they, they didn't have too many aircraft. I think it was 25 planes on the aircraft carrier. Very small. It was like a small oil factor, but they put a deck on them. 
And they had quite a few of them. And they had a lot of destroyer escorts. I think the, they built about 700 destroyer escorts because the Germans would hurt us to ship and supplies over to Europe. But, uh, but I was very lucky and never had no real action too much. A lot of training. And then we, we go down to uh, uh, Cuba, Guantanamo Bay and all for training and all that. And we'd all get sunburned down there. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason I have trouble now, I guess. <laughs> of course, the whole time we worked on the farm, we just worked shorts and shoes. That's about all the boys had on. <laughs> But uh, it, it was a very, uh, very good experience for me, I thought, because I was just a teenager, you know, and they, uh, they uh, taught, teach you discipline, which is very good. And I, I think it, it was very good for me. I was very lucky. <laughs> very lucky. How did you meet your wife? <clears throat> well, I knew her from... Uh, School and all, she went to psych for school oh, too, yeah. but she was under me. But uh, I guess we really met at Baz Franklin's dance hall. I don't know if anybody knows where Baz Franklin is. <laughs> uh, her, her sister and where her is boy, it? <laughs> boyfriend would go there. It was a like a country dance every Saturday night, mm. and they would take her up there. And then, uh, which I was just about 16, I, I finally got a car after I went to work at Russell's, and I would go up there and, and uh, we sit with her or something. Mm -hmm. uh, they, uh, and we danced a little bit, you know, that's where I started, I guess. <laughs> and so they met her, and then um, we went together about two years. And then we got married, and we was married 69 years. Oh, very good. Two months short of 70. Mm. Exactly two months short of 70. But, uh, but we danced a lot during our life, too. Anytime there was a dance hall, country music. We both loved country music. <laughs> and we danced. And, uh, of course, I, I still dance today. I've heard about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I enjoy dancing. And I'm, I'm, I'm very lucky that I'm healthy and can keep dancing. And, um, Did you ever go to the town of Oakland to to oh, their yeah. hall to dance? No. No? No. no never, never knew about that. I used to ride bicycles down there and all, you know, from the farm or whenever we could. Of course, we rode bicycles to the swimming holes. After I got older, you know, you ride bicycles, and we. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, there was there was two swimming holes on Morgan Run, was very good. One we called Dell's, and Dell's Farm, go down Greensville Road, was on your right. The other one would go down Greensville Road a little more, was on your left. It was about a mile. You had to walk up through the woods. We always called that ten ten foot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think Shirley knows where that was. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Did you have any friends in the town of Oakland? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, uh, a lot of the, some of the boys down there would, uh, uh, my father would get them to help on the farm and all, oh. and help us learn all. Yeah, we knew a lot of people from down there. Yeah. yeah a lot I heard y'all delivered milk. Huh? I said yeah. I heard y'all delivered yeah, milk, too. Yeah, yeah. They used to deliver milk down there. Of course, that was well. The, the milk when we first had the cows, we never had electricity in the old house, and we had a spring about a hundred yards east of the old house. And that spring had spring water, and uh, they built the spring, and the spring water would run from the spring into the spring house, then they made troughs like in there mm -hmm. and when we milk we milk and take the milk down to the spring house and strain it, 
put it in a can and then put the can in this trough where the water comes and that's how they kept the milk cool. Oh. So we didn't have no electricity in the house or the spring house or electricity there for a good while before we had electricity. Then the uh, government got on about them. We had the electricity and had to build a new spring house or uh, like a refrigerator up next to the house and all. But that's how that spring, that's where we carried water to drink from the spring and, and kept the milk cold. And, and if, we, if we made butter, we put it, <coughs> put it in the spring house to keep it cool. <laughs> yeah. Did you go to the Oakland church? Yeah, yeah. yeah we, uh, most of the Hushish and Doll belong to the Oakland church. If you, if you ever go to the cemetery there, there's, there's Hushes lined up all around there. <laughs> <laughs> Taking over again. <laughs> and, uh, Uncle Walter's family, <coughs> all of his children and all the girls and boys did a lot of work for that Oakland church. And, uh, of course, uh, they, they also did a lot of work for the church now up here at the, when they rebuilt my Uncle Walter, put the addition on and all, and uh, with Martin and Marvin. Mm -hmm. they, 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 uh, Uncle Walter's three boys, Martin and Marvin and Norman, was all carpenters and good carpenters. Yeah, and they very good friends, you know. Martin helped me with my house a lot. Of course, I helped him on his house, so that's the way we worked, <laughs> yeah. But I know my house, I got about four or five different rafters, different cuts of rafters, and uh, I didn't know how, so I, I asked Martin, he, oh yeah, so he come down Cut all the rest before. Us, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, were were you interested enough, or did you know about um, Baltimore City coming in to destroy the town of Oakland uh, for water? Yeah, I was. I I knew about it all, you know, but uh, I don't know. I was a teenager, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, I, I didn't worry about that. You know, of course, n none of us boys stayed on the farm. It, I guess we were, thought it was too much work, you know. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, we just didn't. Uh, but I used to, I come way <laughs> back, I used to love to have garden and all. We did, me and my wife both. We, we loved to do a lot of gardening in that time. What since we do now, but uh, well, we cut back on that. I don't do too much garden now. Too much work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I call you the tomato man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you got good tomatoes. This is the picture of the of the old house. Any of you you've probably seen it before. That's the uh, old house, and that was. That was an old house, yeah. But, but we we raised chickens, hogs, cattle. We never went hungry. Show that and explain yeah, well, why you have yeah, it. This this is the tree of the uh, Hush family, and uh, when we had the Hush reunion, anybody that had a 25th wedding anniversary would get one of these trees. Mm -hmm. up in, uh, our 25th anniversary was 1973. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's the Hush family. Who did the actual tree? Huh? Who drew it? I had a uh, friend over at Springfield. He was an artist. Uh -huh. And he, he did this one. But then we had uh, Don's uh, daughter, Janice. She did she did a lot of them. She does a little art work. And she done a lot of the rest. And, I don't know who did Robbie's there. Yeah, Stan, 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 that, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, but I went to the grandchildren. I didn't go to the great-grandchildren. Now, a lot of them's on here, too, but 
I don't know half of them. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, okay. Does anybody else have questions? So, so Thornton, uh, when the reservoir, when the city of Baltimore needed to acquire that land, and your dad was still living in the farm down at the boat dock, yeah. did he own the property where his house was, and that, that's the one he built on the curb, and where Donald lived, and then yeah. all the way, was that all part of his ground? No, no, that's the ground that they bought the his property. Okay. They bought that in, uh, I think, 39 or 40. There you were. Yeah. Well, when they, they did own it, when it came time to, to have to get out of there, so they forced him out, I guess, when the dam was it. So yeah. he, he, he already owned the property. Yeah, they owned that. Yeah, yeah we, we, yeah. we farmed some of that. Yeah, I mean, there used to be corn planted right where I live now. Now, um, did that property extend from the boat dock all the way to Oakland Road? You know, the back of your farm on the back yeah. of the boat dock, it, yeah. it went, ran back towards the old watershed. Now, did, did you extend all the way to Oakland Road? Not Oakland Road, but Oakland Road as it, it came down. Yeah, yeah. I thought so. Yeah, it, I guess it was about, uh, I don't know, 300 yards or 200 yards all that land on o Oakland Road. But then there was, there all back, was way all back and all. There's 165 acres in that, that property. Yeah. yeah. What, what did your father do for a living before he farmed? He, he mostly farmed all his life, and then, uh, wish they could get there, then he used to, uh, uh, he bought a truck, and he, he, which a lot of farmers did at them days, went and uh, huxed fruit and vegetables in Baltimore and all. And then he bought trucks and he he get them farming during the day and they haul stuff at night and all we 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 have haul everything I believe in Kerry <laughs> <coughs> I know when I was a kid they he got a job doing the winter hauling coal mm -hmm. and uh, Herb, Bill and Don and my father and they did delivered coal in Baltimore City and they'd come home nine, ten o'clock at night and they all cold dust all over the face and all that. I never had to do that. <laughs> then after that, he got a job of hauling soapstone down Nashville from the soapstone uh, quarry to the railroad track. I, I helped that. I, when I was about 13, I, I thought I was smart and I could pick up a 50-pound bag, you know, and I did that, but it wasn't long before I was on the 80-pound bag and 100-pound bag. I didn't, I didn't weigh much over 100 pounds myself. <laughs> but that was work. And did, did he build the houses? I mean, we know Arthur Avenue and May Lane is named after him, and he bought the hat with well, the Hammond House now. Did, was he, did he get into property development and, and build because, you know, Arthur Avenue is named after him because of Yeah, yeah. Did he, did he no, the, the only two houses he built there was uh, Don's house. He helped Don with his house and helped her with his house. And, uh, but he owned that road, so they named it, he named it after Yeah, himself. yeah. But, but, but he sold most of the lots to people that wanted to build at that time. And of course, Uncle Walter, now he bought from the property that Daddy and Mom bought on the Hay property, and then Uncle Walter must have bought the, house, the other houses. And there's seven houses there that Uncle Walter built from the, on the Hay property. So you get almost up to the Oakland Road now. There's, there's seven little houses there that Uncle Moore built. Like where Cindy Hilker lived? Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's the last I house. Exactly that's the last house he built. Yeah, they were uh, Cape Cod type houses. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, seven of them he built there. Yeah, yeah. Uncle Moore, he, he was the builder. Then, then he went, bought ground up the Ridge Park and built a lot of houses back there. Yeah. 
Well, which one of you had the trash? Wasn't your father had the trash business? Didn't want to make Yeah, yeah, he started the trash business. Yeah. <laughs> Quite the enterprising guy. <laughs> yeah. He did everything. <laughs> I believe. <laughs> the dump was on this property, right? Well, yeah, he, yeah, he, uh, yeah, on on this property, right, right back here, yeah. No, but until they stopped him, I think he had stopped. And, <laughs> yeah, but of course, uh, he sold most of the front lot of this property to people. But the, this this property here, he, he sold to Mike Nichols. Mm -hmm. And Mike Nichols sold it to the county. They was wanted. They thought about building a school here. Then they uh, they they didn't didn't like the location or something. So then they they built this place. So. <laughs> uh, Brenda added your house is unique the way the stone. Where'd you get the stone? You built those two. <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> and the fields, a lot of it. But of course, mine now. I uh, uh, I can't think of the guy's first name. Mr. Ebony, he was a builder. He, he bought one of the houses, one of the barns, up off of uh, Deer Park Road. It was Nicodemus Road then, and the city came to Deer Park. There was a farm there, a Lysa farm, and he bought one of the barns to use the seeding to build his son's house, Herman Evans, right back of where Robbie lived. And the uh, stone, I asked him about the stone foundation, and he, he didn't want it, he said, yeah, you can have it. So I hauled, I don't know how many loads from that stone foundation, and Wes, I bought a little truck, and me and Wes would go up there and haul, the, get the stone. Now that stone, they, they didn't have cement them days. They just had lime and sand. And you could take a wrecking bar and push down and get the stone up. And I hold it. I say half of my house is, is made out of them stones. Yeah. And then we, we got some stones that come out of the uh, tunnel. That is, we, we hold, hold, hold. I don't know where he did it or how he did it or what. But he would, he would buy some of them stone, or get some of them stone, and come up and dump them. And then I got I got a lot of them stone in in my house. They are gray, the gray stone that come out of the uh, tunnel going to Baltimore City to the water. <laughs> yeah, and we pick a lot off the field, French stones and all. Yeah, that's, that's stone on both of the houses, mine and his. <coughs> is about nine inches thick. And uh, the Wolver boys laid most of the stone in the houses, both of them. Yeah. I have a question for your daughter. Are you married and are, do you live in the area? Yeah. Do you? Yeah, I'm married in the South of City right now. Oh. So you get to see each other. Yeah, yeah. We, we spend our families in travel, so we lived in Australia for six years. Cool. Yeah. Um, Dad came to Australia. <laughs> oh. In August, yeah. which was very cold. <laughs> yeah. And then we lived in Germany. Three we years. Came there as well, September 11th, 2001. Yeah. And they flew in oh. uh, September 11th. Very interesting. <laughs> and her and her husband both worked for NSA. Ah. And they're both retired now from NSA, but <coughs> she works part time, three days a week. Yeah. And he works full time. Full -time. Yeah. I'm trying to follow in that footsteps. <laughs> I, kind of I, I tell her retire early. <laughs> <laughs> well, are there any more questions? Culture life at Springfield is six years. How big a apartment was that? One room. Mm -hmm. One room. Whoa. Yeah, then. Same, George Holman. Same room? Same room. Yeah. 
one room and second floor where the boys home were. Well, there's was quite a few of us lived in there. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, just get married or something. You know, quite a few. And yeah, we lived there six years. Yeah. But at that time, when we went to Springfield, when she went in May and I went in June, they had the cafeteria there and your food was free. So you, you get up and you go up and you, you get your breakfast. And if you, if you work lunchtime, you go get your dinner. And in the evening, you get off, you go up and get, get your supper. Yeah, you very good. And they had a bowling alley underneath the employee's home. Yeah, and mm. the patients would set the pins up for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, but it, it, we could save money there. So we did. And I think at the time, uh, after six years, I think we had $3,000 in bank. And I said, well, but we can start building now. So, <laughs> but we was two years building. But uh, we, would, we would order lumber or whatever we need to build. And then they would send the bill, and the next month we would, we would pay, the, pay the bill off. That's the way we kept building for the two years we built the house. <laughs> Never had a mortgage. Or <laughs> <laughs> charge cards. Did you have a charge yeah, card? Yeah, once in a while. <laughs> Don't use it too much. <laughs> Yeah. Very good life. I've had a very good life. Yep. Very lucky. Very blessed. Mm. <laughs> well, you were talking about the Dan Sportsman Hall. Were you involved in the organization or running Sportsman's Hall? Mineral Hill. Mineral Hill. Yeah. Were you for the uh, yeah. organization that ran? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was how many years? 1950, well, uh, I joined it in, in sometime in 53 or 54, and I, that's when they was building it, and I, I couldn't help them out too much till I dropped out. Then afterwards, I guess, 57 or 55 or something, I rejoined it. And then, uh, I'm still a member, I'm the only old member now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, you know, they originally started it. Yeah, yeah. They own ground. We, we own ground up in Gary County. Now, 165 acres. We sold that. You know, we couldn't shoot or nothing down there. Every time you shoot a gun off, somebody called the police. You know. <laughs> 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 and uh, they live all the place up in Gary County. And, huh. Yeah, they. We got. There's only about 11, 12 members right now, but they still carry it. And I used to go up there hunting too, you know. Of course, I love to hunt. I, I did because because of the icebergs, you know. Right. I used to hunt with your father and Leonard and Jimmy. Me and Jimmy used to hunt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did a lot of hunting in my time. I stopped about five years ago. I figured it was time to quit. <laughs> 89 is old enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, we thank you very much for telling us about your life yeah. and your families. <laughs>